Hey everyone, it's Mojax, back in the DJ City UK lab. About a week ago, Denon DJ released Engine OS version 1.6, the new version of the operating system which all of their Prime series hardware is based on. They also released a new version of Engine Prime, the accompanying software. I was in two minds about whether to do a video about that or not because I already did one. I did one about the public beta back in 2020. And there is some new stuff in here which wasn't in those initial beta versions, but I just couldn't decide if it was enough to justify a whole new video. But then I got an email from Serato and here we are. Let's get to it. I won't spend too much time going over the stuff in Engine OS 1.6, which I already covered back in September of last year. Firstly, of course, we're delighted that Beat Source Link now joins Beat Port Link and the other streaming services accessible directly from the Prime Series devices. That works great, and I've been using Link on the 6000s for months now. One big improvement for me over version 1.5 is that tracks you've played now show up in your playlists as green on all the linked players. They didn't do that with streaming tracks before, and that's really helpful for long sets. There is also Dropbox integration, so you can access tracks from your own personal cloud too. You set that up through the Engine Prime software, and there are a bunch of improvements to that, some fairly significant. Firstly, like most big platforms, the software now supports Mac OS 11 Big Sur, but unsurprisingly, like most of the others, it doesn't yet support Apple's M1 chips. The second big feature is flexible beat grids. You can now drop beat markers at any point and change the BPM after them, so you can now grid unquantized or even transition tracks. The Prime hardware will also read and work with those flexible grids. On that subject, Engine Prime now imports beat grids from Serato DJ Pro and Rekordbox, both static and flexible. This is pretty huge if you already have your collection in one of those applications, as you can now import tracks directly in the software, and all the work that you've put into setting your grids properly is retained, as well as the cue points and saved loops. For example, here's a transition track from DJ City. We provide all of our tracks with Serato beat grids, and on importing it into Engine Prime, the beat grid is right there with the transition fully intact. Moving on to the hardware, the Prime 4 now features the track preview feature where you can tap on a track in the library view and listen to it without loading. That was on the other hardware already, so it's cool to see that make its way to the 4 as well. But the big new hardware feature is on the SC6000 and SC5000 players, as well as the M versions of those, dual waveform view. Having two layers on each player has always been a cool feature, but this elevates it to a different level. You now have stacked waveforms and a large info box for each layer, and the elements are both highlighted and color-coded depending on which layer is active. This is a super dope update, which really improves the experience of using two layers on one deck. The only frustration is that Denon DJ have been accidentally on purpose, leaking a device recently which looks like some kind of second layer controller, but we still don't know exactly what that is yet. Hopefully, we we will soon enough. And finally we get to the thing which Serato have just announced and which is what tipped me over into making this video. From their release, Serato DJ Pro support was promised for the SC6000 and 6000M players and it's now going to be available imminently. The control mode for Serato was already very cool on the SC5000s, with up to four virtual decks controllable with just one player, depending on what interface or mixer that you're using. It's important to note that the players are always going to be an add-on controller, so you'll need a Serato supported mixer or interface to use alongside them. On the 6000s, not only do you get the tight control and comfortable browsing that you did on the 5000s, but also moving waveforms as well. Unless I'm forgetting something, this is the first time Serato have ever done moving waveforms on a media player rather than a mixer or controller, so it's very cool to see. I've had a short time to test out the functionality in a beta version of the software, and it's really quite impressive, with multiple pad modes supported and all of the player controls mapped in a logical fashion. If you're a user of both Serato DJ Pro and 6 6000 or 6000M players, you should definitely give this a try as soon as it drops. So there you go, my take on Engine OS 1.6 and the new Serato DJ Pro control mode for the SC6000 players. A simple conclusion really, it's better than the last version, it has some cool new stuff, so you should download it and install it in your Prime Series hardware. That's that, you know, the Engine Prime software is just streets ahead of where it was, you know, a year ago, two years ago. It's still not perfect. There's still things I'd like to see changed or improved, but I could say that about any of the software platforms that I deal with here on the channel. It just feels like a much more mature bit of software than it did a while ago. So yeah, overall, a very solid update, some nice new features, and I remain excited about the future directions that Denon DJ might take this Engine OS into. 
Who knows what's in store for us in the next 12 months? I'm excited to find out. Thanks for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.